On March 11, 2017, the Devon Plays channel has been created. It was known as Home of the Samurais for quite a couple of years. Before December 11th of 2023. When it became the Devon Place Paradox. On September 28th, 2024, the Devon Place Paradox YouTube channel has finally reached 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. And you want to know the thing about those three zeros? They're technically eggs, if you really think about it. Thank you all so much. And now, it's time. Hello, everybody. This is Devin Plays here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. And as promised from a bunch of announcements and a couple of other videos, we're doing a fourth Angry Birds character collection video. This is the main flock, of course, with a few other forms on the side. So, without further ado, Let's get started. For obvious starters, we have Red. The leader of the flock, he's basically a temperamental individual. Yep, you know the story. Next up are the Blues. Okay, Jim, Jake, and Jay. Y'all stand up now. <laughs> All right. They were basically the youngest at a time before Bubbles was born. Sometime after them. Next up is the speedster, the most arrogant one. Chuck. A yellow triangular bird who brags about his speed a whole lot. He's basically a red belt in karate. He's basically pretty good at wood. Just like how the blues are good at ice or glass. Whatever you want to call it. Next up is Bob. I would like to call him Bob Meister. Yeah, that sounded pretty cringe, but he's pretty good at stone and it can explode. He loves his ice cream, especially if it's strawberry flavored. He also has a crush on, speaking of which, Matilda. Matilda is a very peaceful individual. And... She likes to plant flowers, and she can lay eggs. Ones that can explode, at least. Next up is probably the clumsiest individual. Hal. A boomerang bird known for his clumsy personality. Like I said, when it comes to my series, I do not want any inconsistencies with the character's personality, so I'll have Hal be clumsy. And I won't have him go through any form of accent because, like I said, with many other series, they tend to make this dude more inconsistent than he already is. They make him a smart individual. Some, some like Gerard, for example, give him a more unique accent. I believe his is Australian there. Okay, here comes our next guest. Uh, big guest, I mean. He's big and bad, by the way. Terrence. Y'all should have saw this dude coming from a mile away. Thank God you didn't hear him stepping through or hopping through. They don't really have legs. But speaking of the youngest individual, here's Bubbles. He's basically able to puff up to a balloon, which I have that form right here. Okay, this isn't necessary. Yeah, I just eated that so hard. Next up on the list is Stella. Just like Red, she knows how to lead her own group. She could blow bubbles, but at the same time, at some point, she was given a new ability called Pink Flash, which makes her bounce off of walls. She can bounce depending on if there's like a trampoline there. If there's like something else bouncing there, she will basically bounce more times. Up to like one at least. If there's more than one bouncy thing, it might go up to like two or even three at most or something. They probably had their limits on that one. <clears throat> Next up is Silver. She's a basically goofy goober. She could just do a 360 degree loop. 
You're gonna love this girl. But before I get to two more guests, I want to move towards another guest, Iceberg. Like I said, just like with how I want to make things pretty consistent with how the classic universe wants to go. So he'll just be called Iceberg. I won't give him any real name. Just like with other series like Fantastic Adventure where he's named Isaac there. Just like how he has his delusional like type of personality when he sees a quote unquote alien invasion. I just have to give that, get that personality out. Plus give him some personality traits as well as a similar sounding voice to a fictional character named Wilbur Robinson. I'll get to that. I'll get to a character that's based around that later. But Iceberg has like many traits out of Wilbur Robinson. His personality, his voice. I could do a pretty good Wilbur Robinson impression if you ask me. <laughs> now we can move on to the two guests I was just getting to. Melody and Joe. Melody is a famous pop star who can suck up things into her mouth. Pause. Like Kirby. You know, me personally, I wish that Kirby got a movie. And she's the reason why I'm hoping they get a movie. Like they make a movie out of Kirby. And for Joe, they are a non-binary individual. You know, I might base them around winner or even price tag from the power of two in terms of personality. I don't know. But Joe won't be as famous as Melody. They will just be obscure, just like Winner from Teapot. But like I said, okay, okay, whatever. We'll just move on to the Stella Flock, which I'll start with Poppy. She's a crazy and loud individual, just like me. Basically doing anything to like disturb others, but I try my best not to disturb others. I try to keep it down a little bit. And speaking of keeping down, Luca. Mm. Luca is the only boy in the group. And he's considered a baby. That is describing him. And speaking of which, I know one character I can relate to the most in Stella's Flog. Probably my most favorite. That being Willow. She's very artistic. Just like I am. And I'm glad she's artistic because being good at art, uh, well, at least painting for the most part, I, I'm not that good with painting. So you're going to have to bear with me on that one. I don't have any of my paintings at all from any type of grade, especially the 12th grade. Especially when, that was when I started painting for real. So we can move on to the brains of the group. Dahlia. She is a scientist. Trying to do experiments around Golden Island. And the last one, who's supposed to be the main antagonist, I'll have her redeemed at some point. When we get to like the Stella series. Gale. That means the whole Stella flock is here. And yes, just like some articles said, I'm trying to follow up on some decent redemptions. So I'm going to give the characters at least a sign, like at least a couple of signs that they will change. Which is something most redemptions don't do. Okay, some redemptions do so. But we get to move on to someone who has been deemed as canon recently. And I like to thank Cream of Draws out of that one. The very famous Ruby. She's basically Red's younger sister, at least in this one. I believe I believe that Red is also the younger, I mean the older brother for Ruby in the canon media as of now. And speaking of which, I have two more guests. Hockey Bird, I have yet to make his hat on that one. He's pretty good at hockey. He's not too arrogant about it. And Tony. Terrence's cousin from Finland. I'm glad we all established this. And 
spoilers for season four, since I've already done season four of the old show, there's still spoilers for season four of the reboot. This is Vincent, this is Samantha, and this is Zoe. And here are the eggs that they're supposed to hatch from. They will be in the state until like the finale of season four. One character that's still in somewhat of a terrible condition, even after this point in time. Mighty Eagle. He's basically the mentor for all the birds, especially Red. He gave one of his powers to him. You know, he could do the Mighty Feathers ability. This will be revealed in season two. I'm glad we established the main flock. So, uh, also sell a flock. So I can finally move on to the pigs. Speaking of which, I'm not gonna move y'all, but I'm gonna move y'all somewhere else. I won't be disrespectful, I promise. Say, why do I feel like I'm missing someone? Or something, actually. Oh, here it is. Here's Girl Bird. <laughs> you know, she was actually nicknamed Ruby, but it was actually confirmed on the wiki specifically that Ruby and Girl Bird are technically two different characters. So you can scram now. Boing! <laughs> she landed into my basket full of my dirty clothes. Okay, so for the next segment, I have a bunch of bad piggies. They're gonna be the main antagonist of like the first four seasons of the reboot. Well, technically first three because season four might rack up a redemption arc for all of them. Well, most of them at least. So we're gonna get the obvious one out of the way and King Pig is the first one. He's gonna be more the main antagonist of the first three seasons. Known for being the son of Leonard and some unnamed Queen Pig. Well, she's not unnamed, but we'll keep her name a secret until we actually get to her. Next, we'll come up with Foreman Pig. I have two spare ones, which I'll, will, um, you know, I'll get to those at the end when I come up with the spares. And then we have Helmet Pig, or Corporal Pig. By the way, Foreman Pig used to be known as Mustache Pig. So, Corporal Pig, he's, he got that sergeant personality. I based him more on Sarge from the Car series. But I don't know what pig to base around Fillmore from the Cars franchise. Since I'm already basing Corporal Pig around Sarge from the Cars franchise. And then next up is the main antagonist for the fourth season. The upcoming fourth season to be exact. Chef Pig and here will be his wizard counterpart. I might reveal this one in season three of the reboot. This is Waste Pig. The demonic Wiz Pig is done. I just need to do the hat. I can't really do the hat all too well. Just like I can't even do the hat somewhat decently here. Bro, and he looks so flat here. Not trying to insult him, but it's just kind of the truth. And then we have Professor Pig. He's basically a scientist just like Dahlia. Next we got Ross, the main protagonist of Bad Piggies. He's a pretty cool individual and he's just a normal minion pig with freckles, with paint, which I did back in the 12th grade. Next up on our list is Mechanic Pig. He's basically the mighty eagle of Bad Piggies because if you're struggling on a level, you can always just hire him. But before we get to Chronicler Pig, I wanna introduce one more pig. I beat Gerard to making this one. I made this one back in like 2023 somewhere. Which is a character that Gerard never thought to even make at all. Let alone modify pig for? Postman Pig. Who remembers this character? <laughs> now we can get to Chronicler Pig. He's basically a source for all legends on Piggy Island. Especially with the history. We can move on to another character who's also modified. I still have his original form, by the way. This is Fat Pig, or El Porcador. He will speak 
with a Hispanic accent. If I can at least do a Hispanic accent correctly. Hey, I took a Spanish class, so I at least should know how to do so. I'm gonna move on to another set of pigs, the king pig mode, or the golden king pig characters, which are a normal minion pig, the triplet small pigs, the jetpack pig, already have the bomb pig, which is basically a cobra pig with a fuse on it, the bully ball pig, which is basically just a aluminum foil ball. Uh, it's a bit wobbly thanks to how I taped it. I'll get that taped later. Boomerang pig. Fat pig, technically. But I'll call him big pig here. Balloon pig. I have his puffed up form right here. And female pig. And funny enough, if I turn the back, I have her yellow bow. I won't have her be the love interest of King Pig because I'll just have her be a bit younger. The next character I have is, whoa, 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 whoa. Goliath Pig. A really buff pig. I hope some of y'all can remember him. Because he was only shown in the Toon series. I don't think he's been shown outside of that. And then another Toons Pig, well, he came from Epic, which is technically using the Toons designs. Brute Pig. Or the Pig Brute, whichever one you want to go with. And then here are the Guardian Pigs. What are, not really Guard Pigs, but like, they're basically soldiers that are guarding the entrance of King Pig's Palace. Yeah, don't mind how the ears look, like if they're a bit bent incorrectly. And then lastly, before I move on to other special pigs, I have Handsome Pig. Handsome Pig is Gale's second in command. Often being a simp for her. Then we can finally move on to some special pigs that I made. Ivor. He's the head ninja pig. He's basically the best that they have. If you don't know how I came up with the name Ivor, I played a lot of Minecraft story mode. So I based him around his voice. He's probably one of the only characters that's actually based around a character, already existing fictional character based on voice, personality, and straight up skills in fighting. Speaking of fighting and skills, I have a very special one. Golden Pig. Who remembers that level, like that bonus level you get to play at the morning? Where you have to like, there's like a cloud where the golden pig stands on. Man, that was fun. But like I said, I thought the developers did have a point and it was pretty pointless. So I see why they removed it. We can move on to two more pigs before we moved on to more other pigs. The roundup pigs. Piggy and Jones or the cowboy pig and the cowgirl pig or Jesse. All right, so for some other pigs I made, that are basically based on epic pigs. I made two pirate pigs. This is Snore the Pirate, the one with the eye patch in here. And then here is a standard pirate pig. I've yet to make the peg leg pirate pig and the bandana pirate pig, you know, the one with the dead fish that weakens you. I've, I also have yet to give this one a name. And I have one from Angry Birds 2, the Magician Pig. Don't mind if this one can't have its hat stand up correctly at times. I'm not taping that thing because it's not really meant to stand up correctly. But still, I don't have his magic wand at all. I'm pretty sure he could teleport without it anyway. Like I said, for those who don't know why there's no background music, because I was playing the background music on my TV. So don't mind, there's no background music. And speaking of which, I have, who I just mentioned during when I was reviewing King Pig, Leonard and Esmeralda. Esmeralda is supposed to be Leonard's wife. 
They're basically the parents of King Pig. And they care about him so much and they would die for him. Plus, they want to raise him just like him. And here's Courtney. Leonard's assistant. It used to be Ross at some point in the first film before it changed to Courtney in the second film. Why do they have to do that? But like I said, I feel like Ross should be King Pig's son here. But that would probably make things a bit inconsistent. Who, who, man? And then here's one more special pig that I made. I here's Dr. Piggy. Try to guess who this is based around. Your only hint is that the person, the person that this pig is based around used used to be an artist for Maniac Mania Infinity, but he was fired after being exposed to dating a 14-year-old. Yeah, karma's a B-word, isn't it? But his power is that he can throw explosive bananas everywhere. Do they even sell explosives? Explosive bananas at a Burger King? Yeah, I highly doubt they do. But before I move on to the rest, here are the minion pigs. I don't have a Piggy McCool yet. That will be made. But like I said, once we get to season three, then we could do a fifth character collection. And thank God it's actually the very first, you know, a thousand sub special. Because, like I said, I feel like the second one will be a, like a live stream. Because that will be all of the movies that I watch. So, there's that going for you. In this next segment, there won't be any music, but I am going to say what the next segment is about. In this box will be a bunch of birds and other characters that will appear at some time in season five. And are heavily based around already existing characters. Let's just get the ones that are already based around existing characters first. First bird I wanted to explain is Hector. He's basically supposed to be Hal's younger brother, I guess. No, no, no. He's supposed to be his older brother or something. But, but me personally, he's actually supposed to be what Hal looks like in Friends and Reloaded. But there's a difference between Friends and Reloaded in terms of how the characters look. The outline color is supposedly black in Friends and Reloaded. The outline color is supposed to match what their skin tone is. The reason that their outline is colored black is because not only was it drawn by like pencil, I guess, but like it's also because it's more of a cartoon type stuff. So for the next bird I have that's based around an already existing character from already existing media is the Hug Trader. A bird who basically goes around, has a shop where he can give this dude a hug. Most people, especially Red himself, he denies it. You know, fun fact, he never even spoke any words in the original film, yet in the second one to give him a full on voice. And I'm glad he's a happy-go-lucky character. Because it's fine to have happy-go-lucky characters despite the name of the franchise and the games. Which, I feel like he's one of the reasons why the first film might have somewhat of a misleading title. Quote-unquote. Next, we got Edward and Eva. I don't have their kid, Timothy, who has a weed allergy and doesn't like clowns. But they're supposed to, they're supposed to be his parents and... They have some incident with Red. And speaking of having like a feud or like some conflict with Red, that leads to the next character. Probably the most infamous one out of those that already exist. Niederflyer. <sighs> Lord can tell how much he's hated by the fan base. But I'm glad he's hated because that's the whole point of his character. He's supposed to be disliked by the public in general let alone the entire fan base. But there's some people who like Niederflyer, and I can respect that. But he's he's basically a slightly inferior, inferior version of Heather from Total Drama. Like, they even had the same personality of anything, refusing to even care about those around them. <coughs> oh, I just talked too much to the point where my voice is dying. 
Now we got the prototypes. They're supposed to be like grandparents or relatives towards the main flock themselves. So first is George. He's basically Red's prototype and basically his grandpa, I guess. I guess you can put it that way. And Chase. He's Chuck's grandpappy. And his prototype, by the way. Even though this one technically doesn't count as a prototype, it's basically a separate character. Also kind of as a prototype anyway, since he feels like one. It was an unused character entirely. Well, at least in seasons. This is Bomb Bomb, or Pyro. I feel like if anything, Pyro does sound better, despite that not being his official name. Basically, what he does is he can split into three and blow up upon impact. That's like the blues and bomb combined. There's another bomb prototype. I used to think this is a Matilda prototype, if anything. This is Earl or Frankenbird. I won't make him a Frankenstein type bird in my universe, but like. But this is Earl. I'm naming him Earl here because the other Earl was Piggy and a Jones, so I don't want to confuse two. And then here's Alejandro. I, I don't know what to name him because I wanted at least something to start with the letter H. That was Brazilian since he's basically of Brazilian descent. And we have Bubbles 2 prototypes. Poof and Burak. I'm going to give a fun fact on these two. Is that Poof? The reason I came up with the name Poof for this Bubbles was because that was what Bubbles was called in SML. You know Black Yoshi and the Birds? That was what he was called. And then I called him Burak because I want him to sound Jack, I guess. Like he's from the Jack Republic. Fun fact, that's literally what Mater is called in Jack Republic. Yeah. All the cars characters go by different names in different countries, depending on what the language is spoken there. So that's why I call the Burak here. But if anything, it's Chase that's going to sound like Mater, or at least act like him. And speaking of Burak, here's what he looks like puffed up. Thank you, thank you. Next up, we got to talk about Fami Birds. Ones that were made up by the community, or at least come from bootleg products. One of the bootlegs I'll reveal later. But we'll just get the bootlegs out of the way, then we'll move on to the effed up fans. Alright, but whoa, 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 wait. Who are these two again? Oh yeah, this is Drill Bird. This is Skunk Bird. Apparently one of them was a joke and the other one was an unused character. It was only in the prototype. Okay, yes, I'm just making sure. Like, Thought I didn't make the tail on this one, but I did. But like I said, they will be exclusive to like some space adventure that they go on off screen. Yes, Kino off screen. It won't happen on screen. Because I do not have all the resources to do a space series. So. Y'all two are going somewhere. Back to space. Bye. <laughs> I'm just eating them off screen. But, as I said, bootlegs are coming up. So, here are the Cannon Ducks. Yeah, this is Cannon, Bluey, Sticky. I was going to name him Gluey because that rhymed. But I can't have any rhyming names, so I'm going to name him. I'm going to name him Sticky, Boom Boom, and... Uh, Big Duck, I have no other names. Yeah, these are pretty uncreative. Probably said Sticky since his power is to stick to things. As proven in Angry Ducks. Yeah, that's what they're supposed to be called. Or Cannon Ducks, actually. Yeah, I named them depending on what trait or their power or color they have. Except Cannon, because even though it's technically not supposed to be his name, someone pointed out that like they just didn't have a choice, so there's that going for it. Now I can finally move on to the effed up feds. And their names are Sarge, Woodsy, Toucan, Brooklyn, 
and Frenchie. I feel like Frenchie might be the odd one out of the bunch. I already know that Sarge is the leader. So what would the other three be labeled if this one's technically the odd one out? I don't even think he has some form of physical ability. Everyone else is showing with an ability. Even Brooklyn, if anything. Wait, I don't even think Woodsy has an ability either. He could, He's already pretty strong. Toucan. I feel like Brooklyn is the only one with an ability. Everyone else doesn't. He doesn't need one since he's already strong. So what would his ability be? God dang it. There's another character I forgot. Here's Greg. He's actually supposed to be the Blue's dad. Olive or Olivia is supposed to be the mom. I remember making it, but I just don't know where the mom is at right now. I just had a dad, so much better. We can move on to characters that were originally made by the public. And specifically people of the fan base. The fan base was pretty large and pretty civil at a point. But like I said, after the old games got removed, I feel like that's when things became more toxic. So I'll just move on to the ones I originally made. Then we'll do the ones that were made by the fan base specifically. So I made in total of, I think, no, 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 no. I made five. No, 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 six. Here they all are. Yeah, here were all of my original creations. This unnamed Turkish bee eater. I have yet to come up with that one. Maroon? You know, I'm thinking of naming this one Tasha, you know, like from, you know, for the backyard again. Because because I had no other names for the magenta bird. I have no names for the maroon bird either. So I, I can come up with some unique ones. Or I can just name her Lashana or something. Basically named after one of my favorite total drama characters. We got Luz. Yeah, it's... Spelled L-U-Z, people. Fun fact, despite how her name is supposed to be Luz, she has more of a voice of Amity, of a character named Amity rather than Luz. Yes, this is an Owl House reference. That was intentional. And then we have Adam. Adam. And then Stephanie. She's basically a recolor of Tiffany Fisher. I'm pretty sure we all know who that is. She's an artist in the Angry Birds community. Yeah, I'll have to make that character at some point. Y'all give me some suggestions for this character right here. This Turkish bee eater. Because I have no idea what to name this. So I can move on to characters that were made up by the fan base. Or at least people that I know and love. Regardless of Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, you need a social media platform. At least one original Angry Birds character was made up there. So first we're going to start with Slingshot Frenzy characters. Which are... Swallow, Chirp, and Halo. I feel like Halo first appeared somewhere else before being in Slingshot Frenzy. Also the Alex Bird was there. And the Purple Bird we all know as Bounty. I won't make him, yes, keynote him, like this purple bird was supposed to be a guy, not a girl. So don't make things confusing people, okay? And then there's Shet, as like Ricochet. Fun fact, Gerard kind of got this one wrong in terms of the pronunciation of the name. But Shay is still a good pronunciation nonetheless because it's Ricochet, per se. Like, hey, that's his power, so... Of anything, of anything, that seems kind of right. And then we got the long, legendary purple bird. We do not know what the name of this character is. I'll just give this character a day dim until there's any proper gender confirmation. Yeah, hopefully they confirm that this is a guy. Because we hardly have any purple birds in general that are good guys. That are like in Canada media. Every single purple bird has been a bad guy. Well, except Chuck's space form. That's an exception, but that's still the same character. That's to be entirely separate. And we got probably the most legendary of them all. And I apologize, this one made, or at least made pretty bad. The very legendary, Stinky Steve. Stinky Steve, he's an emo. He basically likes to have a banana peel on his 
head. I don't have the banana peel on his head because, well, it's a bit stereotypical. And it does match up with the stinky part. Because who would unironically have a banana peel on their head for, for no reason? Now we have all the original birds out of the way. We can do ones that are based on YouTubers and already existing fictional characters. This is probably the most fun part of the video. So of anything, I have a total of four. Well, technically five if I count my own persona, which I just saw at the very beginning. Yeah, so in total it's five. But... But mine doesn't count, technically. So it's four. So we're going to start with the first two off the bat, Birdie and the Duck. They're basically twin brothers. I watch their videos about certain topics, like every type of teacher rank, every type of student rank. They do have... But, but did y'all know that Birdie and the Duck weren't even their actual names at all? That's just their current era. Because Birdie was actually called Tag Swag and the duck was called Anguine. And those accounts are still fairly activated at this point in time. For the next YouTube bird, yeah, they're called that because they're basically angry birds based on YouTubers. Tommy Energy. This is basically the first angry bird I've made that was based on a black YouTuber. And I'm proud of it. I'm proud of how he came out. But, like I said, he won't stay in the afro appearance forever. Like, I'll have to trim it down to his braids at some point. I'll have him be in an afro for at least two to three episodes for season five. And then, by, by that point, they will actually grow down. He'll grow down to his braids. Fun fact, there actually was a video where people were roasting him. Someone said he looks like that one scene where Chuck had an afro on. He actually confirmed that Chuck was his least favorite Angry Bird. I mean, to be fair, I can't blame him. He's one of the most arrogant characters to ever exist. Bro, he probably gives Wilbur a run for his own money because he hardly has any arrogant moments in compared to him. And the last YouTuber I have is Say Bird Spark. Yeah, get the pun there. Yeah, he's basically an Angry Bird based on Saber Spark. He's basically a movie reviewer. You know, fun fact. I actually, kind of a hot take, but I know some of y'all might prefer him over Saber Spark, but I prefer Saber Spark over Schaeferless. He has more agreeable opinions than the latter. Plus, at least at least Saber Spark is actually harsh on the right films. Schaeferless is harsh on some of the most wrong films. Like he takes his harsh behavior on the wrong films at that point, bro. But it's fine, as it's just an opinion at the end of the day. So Plus, you wonder why Schaeferless is inconsistently admirable, bro. Because his inconsistent behavior of being harsh towards films is what lets him down on that one. Now we can finally move on to Angry Birds based on already existing fictional characters. It's probably the second most fun part of this whole video. Just going over Angry Birds that are based on fictional characters that I made. Well, I decided to make certain fictional characters into Angry Birds farms. So for the first one, I'm gonna start with Lewis. You know, bit of a hot take I have with Lewis. I just think he's better than Wilbur, in a way. And here's his baby form. That's what Lewis looks like as a baby. Here's what he looks like as a 12 year old. And speaking of Wilbur, here he is. Yeah, like I said, this took many tries to perfect Wilbur's character. Like, at least perfect his appearance. Now, this is perfection. Uh, sadly, I didn't make Carl at all. And then here's Wilbur's grandpa, Grandpa Bud. He wears his clothes backwards, but like I said, he doesn't have anything on from the back. I'll make sure to get to that at some point. Plus, his hair is made up of tissues, balled up tissues. Hey, he's very old, so I had to. And then the spare Matilda I had is used to make Wilbur's mom, Franny. I've yet to make Cornelius, by the way. 
I did make Lewis, but I did not make Cornelius. So that's the last form of Lewis I need to make. She's basically Wilbur's mom that knows karate so much. Here's her bun, her hair ties, and her outfit. Her main outfit that's usually advertised in promotional images. On the Disney Wiki, her profile image doesn't really advertise that at all. Despite how that's how the outfit that's in her profile isn't really her main outfit. You know, she's a MILF for me. Yeah, I'm never saying that again. And then here's Goob or the bowler hat moose. Like I said, it's clearly just lumpy. I could have just left him out of the video. But what if I told you he was lumpy except less goofier? Or, or slightly more goofier, I guess. Because that's what Goofy is known for. Oh, no, no, no. Lumpy is known for being a goofy moron who just kills others by accident. Which probably makes the HTF fan base hypocritical as they hate him for doing that. But they like it when Flippy does it. Yeah, I can't say that's not hypocritical. Because this is probably the second subscriber special that I pointed out. People being hypocritical. And speaking of which, we can move on to the big heroes. Hero Hamada and Baymax. Yeah, they might appear in season five at some point. Hopefully, hopefully I can get that to happen. Hopefully develop a purpose for them to even appear in season five. We can finally move on to probably the dreaded part of the video. Also, here's another character that I originally created. I don't know what to do with her, but she will appear in season five, I promise. The Hungry Birds. They're gonna be the main antagonist of season five of the reboot. They're also supposed to be the main antagonist of season five of the original series, but we'll get to that in a minute. So for the first Hungry Bird I wanna talk about is the Empress herself, Zeta. Yeah, it feels like a really tough choice to make for who the Empress would have been. I'm definitely not using the same Empress Gerard is using, so I have to be different in a way. So I'm using Zeta. Plus I promise, that every official character would appear along with some other characters on the way with her company star Cornelius a fabulous peacock with an Indian accent plus sometimes he'll be played for laughs such as how he gets defeated yeah sometimes also be played for laughs not just for karma and his buddy Rex. Yeah, he speaks in Morse code. I did that sound myself. And then Carlos and the Chicks. Also some characters based around already existing fictional characters. They were based around characters from Hop themselves. So for the Chicks names, they're Phil, Tate, Gene, and Mel, I think. I didn't come up with the fourth name on time. But I can remember it correctly. And then he, here is Ray. He's actually Niederflyer's best friend. They constantly bullied Red most of the time. But like I said, I was going to have Niederflyer change for a person. So he won't be a hungry bird, but Ray will. And then here's Gobbler. A turkey who's tired of having every turkey for being eaten. Even G. Grimey is against turkeys being eaten on Thanksgiving. So, G. Grimey is Gobbler's favorite YouTuber. Yes, this name was a comedic thing. And then here's a Mask 2 candidate named Salvador. Yeah, he's named after the country El Salvador. Just like how Santiago's named under that same capital, Chile. Or that name is probably just a coincidence. I don't know. Also named around one of my favorite painters, Salvador Dali. I did a project of him in the 12th grade. And then here's Bootleg Purple Bird. I'm calling him Randall because, you know, Randall Boggs is one of my favorite, you know, Pixar villains. Heck, he's probably my most favorite Pixar villain in general. Even more, even better than Syndrome, if anything. Hot take. And then here are 
more Hungry Birds are based around already existing characters. Block, Brat, and Burn. They're based on the Rowdy Rough Boys, and I had to come up with some similar names towards theirs. Based on a similar enough trait. Like their name, their voice, like their personality or whatever. And then we can move on to Desmond. Here's his first phase, and here's his second phase. After he was injured, of course. Yeah, what is right eye gouged out, by the way. God, that just looks disturbing to look at. Especially for an original Angry Birds character. And then there's Baron Harmful. He was also made up by the fan base. Or at least someone in the fan base. And then one of Gerard's originals will also be here as well. Not just Cornelius and Rex and some others. Frightful. But one thing I'm going to change about Frightful in this series is the gender. Instead of Frightful being a girl, the render will still have Frightful with the eyelashes. Frightful will be male here. He used to be a classmate of Chuck in karate class. And like I said, they're both arrogant. He's going to be the shadow. And Chuck is going to be the Sonic. And then here are two original ones that I made up. Tiki and Miki and Hawker. Hawker is technically cousins with Frightful. But that's not really outright confirmed. But let me give a bit of a fun fact about Tiki and Miki. Yeah. Tiki and Miki, I had to come up with some names. For Tiki, it's per, it's spelled T-E-E-K-E-E. -E -E. And then Miki is spelled the same way, except with an M. The Miki part was actually a character from George Tiger Eye, which is supposed to be a remaster to George Iger's Rebranded, which is heavily criticized for the character designs and probably some uninspired gameplay or whatnot. Even Jay doesn't like George Iger's. Yet he invites him to Ultimate Jolly Night anyway. It's funny, though. Now, this is how to be hypocritical in a funny way. And then for Hawker, I was going to have Hawker be a guy, but I changed it to a girl since barely any Hungry Birds are girls. It's only just Zeta and these two. <coughs> mm. My voice is dying a bit. And Hawker is also a weightlifter. Also, Tiki and Miki are based around Toxic Pool from Apophobia's second anniversary and George Iger's Hard Mode and George Lucid Gold. I didn't know that game will still exist of some sort, but these are all the Hungry Birds I have. But before I go on to the extra characters that I have, or at least like spares that I have, I want to introduce one more character. This is introduced at some point in season four of the old show. This is Usher, I guess. Yeah, Usher isn't his actual name. This is just a name just in case I was too lazy to come up with one. This is a worm. He's going to be like Ushari from The Lion Guard. And his reason being evil is similar to Gobbler's. He's tired of his home kind of being eaten by birds. While Gobbler was tired of turkeys being eaten. I call him Gobbler because, you know. He, he's a turkey and he goes gobble gobble. He's basically like Nugget from Fantastic Adventures. He's supposed to be Matilda's dad in a way. I might make Nugget, but he won't be an antagonist. And now we can finally move on to the spare characters that I have. Like this Space Red that I have. And this spare Bluebird that I have. It's very squishy. That's why it's a spare. Yeah, if I put it close to my ear, it makes a squeaking sound. And I have three spare chucks. Two of the old ones, which I got the knock on wood and the on thin ice. This is from the Mega Fling set. This one got messed up over time. But don't worry, I might make this one into Rocket Bird from Angry Birds Rio. But it's basically Chuck riding on a rocket. It's nothing really different. And I want to make this one correctly. And then here are two spare bombs I have. 
from one of them for Knock on Wood and the other from Mega Fling. The bomb I currently use is from Mega Smash. Well, no, no, no. The one for Mega Smash is the spare one. So I'm going to make this one. It's a Shockwave. And then here's the spare Terrence I have. <clears throat> and then here are two spare Formic Pigs. Now that that's over with, I really hope you guys enjoyed the first of the three 1,000 subscriber specials that I have. The second one is going to be a live stream of all the movies that I watched. And then the third one will be, I guess the third one will be a Q&A live stream where you guys can ask any questions. So, thank you. I've been wanting this to happen ever since 2018, let alone 2017, which is when the channel was made. And words can't say how grateful I am. But like I said, thank you all. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.